Hey guys, it's Wayne and Blake from Redefine Horizons. I'm trying out a new webcam in this video. Hopefully it uh, it it works okay. Uh, tonight we're gonna we're gonna uh, do some more work in Microsoft Excel. So I have I have another uh, video where I cover some basics to Microsoft Excel. I try and remember to link to that in the comments uh, for this video on YouTube or or have Lori do that for me. Um, so if if you're new to Excel and you haven't watched that intro video. Um, uh, you'll want to do that. So um, this is some data I have on a, on a real life project. So this is some data um, from a project where we've done some aerial mapping and, and we want to do what we call ground truthing. So that's where we go out and we actually ground survey points distributed across the project site and then we use that to check the validity of our uh, what we call our surface model or our, our, tin, our tin surface uh, so we want to see um, how far apart is is the surface that we derived with the aerial data from the from the points that we've actually surveyed on the ground. And so my folks, um, two of my CAD techs, Nikki and Elena, have gone in and done that. And so they've, they've done the first step of that. So they've gone in, and this is just kind of the run. The the it's not completely raw data, but this is fairly raw what they've got here. So they have the the point number of the ground truth point so this is the surveyed point number um, and then this is the rounded elevation difference between the ground truth point number and the elevation at that same horizontal location in in the digital terrain model and then this is the the basic type of um, location where the ground truth point was collected okay uh, and, and don't you don't have to panic if you don't understand all that. You don't. You don't necessarily need to understand all that to to understand what we're doing in Excel. So um, we're gonna we're gonna jockey this data around a little bit. Uh, but if you're interested in, in ground truthing, this is also a helpful example. Okay, so we're gonna make some changes to this raw data, and uh, this is actually a, a, an extra tab here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this and I'm just going to call it scratch um, because I want to manipulate this data but I want to make sure that I that I don't corrupt this data here so we're just going to make a copy of it and that it's sometimes um, a good habit so I want to make sure that I don't corrupt this to original raw data okay so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to put it in we're just going to delete all this and then I'm going to click here in I want to make sure I'm at the top. I click it A1 and I'm just gonna um well didn't work. So I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna I'm gonna click on this little button in the corner here, selects all the cells, and I'm gonna just hit control C for copy. Um, you can also just go here and go copy. Okay, then we're gonna come over and we're gonna click on the scratch tab. I'm gonna click the cell A1 here, so the, the most top left cell, and then I'm gonna just, you can hit Control V for paste, or you can just hit the paste button. Okay, so now I've duplicated my data, and I'm gonna go ahead and rename this, and we're gonna call it raw, okay? Um, and I don't need my caps lock on, so we'll do raw. So I'm just right clicking on these and renaming the sheet, and we're gonna just call this Scratch, you could call it temp or work zone, whatever you wanted. Okay, so the first thing I want to do um, is I'm going to go ahead and I'm, I'm going to um, I'm going to uh, just clean up these headings a little bit. So we have some headings for our, for our data here, and then we're going to use the sort command under data, and we're going to sort this. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to just spell this out. So ground point, ground truth point number. Okay, and then uh, I'm going to just call this elevation difference. Okay, whoop, I misspelled difference. And, and you can see I'm, when I hover over the columns there, I get that little symbol at my cursor and I double click and that makes the, the column wide enough to contain all the text in the column. Um, and, and here I'm going to call this description. Actually, uh, yeah. We'll leave a description for now. We're going to change it later. And then I'm just going to say, hey, I want to make these bold. So we're going to come over to the home and we're going to make those bold for now. Okay. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make these all our company font, which is Dosis. Okay. And um, 
Okay, we're almost ready to do our sort here. Now there's one other thing I'm gonna do here. So these are the elevation differences, but um, you can say you can see some of these are shown to the nearest hundredth of the of a foot, and some are shown to the nearest tenth of a foot. So I just want to fix that and because these are all numbers. I can select those. I just left click and drag my cursor down to select those. And then right here on the home tab of the ribbon, there's this little section called number. This is like the number group, and and right here you can either decrease or increase the the number of places. To the to the right of the decimal, so you can see I just decreased it there. Now I'm going to increase it, so I would like two points past the decimal, and you can see now, um, even on values where there's no um, there's there's a zero in the hundredth place, it's going it's going ahead and showing what we call the trailing zero. Okay, so that's what I want. All right, now <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to do a sort because we want to replace um, we're going to replace these. Uh, descriptions here with what with what we're going to call the ground class okay um, but before I do that I want to go ahead and sort so I want to view these points sorted by the, the description so to do that we're going to click this corner right here of the grid to select everything and we're going to come over to the data tab on the ribbon and we're going to hit the sort and right here this is really important so we're going to check this because we do have headers here we have a header row so if you uncheck that it ignores your headers um, actually it'll sort your headers if you don't have that checked. So we want to check, we don't want it to sort our headers, we only want it to sort this other data here. Okay, and then we're, you can add multiple levels, but we don't have to do that. So we're going to do what we call single level sort. Okay, so I'm going to sort by this first, not by the first column, sorry, by, this, by the third column, so the description, because I want it to sort here by the description. And A to Z is fine. So we're going to hit OK. And you can see now all the dirt descriptions are together and all the edge of pavements points are together. Um, and then we have these, these other classifications. Okay, so now you'll notice when I do that though, these other point numbers, uh, these other columns are now no longer sorted A to Z because we sorted A to Z by the description. Okay, so, and I'll show you, we'll, we'll, we'll do something a little bit different there. We'll do a multi-level sort and I'll show you how you can you can change that. Okay, but now I just want to I want to go ahead and edit replace these values. So we're going to replace these descriptions with with what we call classifications. Okay, so this EP stands for edge of pavement, and it's really the only the only hardscape or hard surface that we had on our project site. So we want this our that we're going to have the best results on these ground truth points, just because of the way the photogrammetry works. And so uh, we want to call this class one. These are our best ground truth points. So we want them to say class one. Okay, so we just want to replace, we want to, uh, so I'm on the home ribbon here under the editing group. We're going to go to replace, okay, and we want to replace EP with class 1. Okay. And we're going to say replace all, so you can see there were 31 of those points that now says class one. Okay, and we're just, we're gonna stay in here. So these dirt points, dirt, um, that is compact dirt, compacted dirt with no vegetation. That's the next best type of ground truth points we have on this site. So we're gonna call that class two. We're just gonna say replace all. Um, so you can see it did that. Okay, and then we have the, the next set of points here um, this is uh, areas of of what we call so this is this is light uh, vegetation or uh, dirt that's not compacted. There's a lot of variability. Okay, and so those are going to be our class three. So we're going to take SV and we're going to make that class three, and we're going to replace mm -hmm. all. Okay, and so that's done now. Okay, so we're going to go. I'm going to go ahead and save this. <clears throat> We've done some work there. Okay, so now I'm going to just show you how to do a multi-level sort. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, select all the data again by left click here. We're gonna go back to the data tab on the ribbon and we're gonna sort. And uh, this time we're gonna um, add a level. So first we sorted by description. Okay, now we're gonna sort by, um, let's go ahead and sort this by the elevation difference. So we want smallest to largest. And we're gonna go ahead and say okay. So now we have all of the elevation um, we have all of the class one points 
sorted from, sorry, sorted from the least, um, the, the smallest number to the, to the largest. Okay, now the problem with this data is we actually have, we actually have negative values here. Okay, so this didn't exactly do, do what I wanted. So what I'm gonna show you is how to get absolute values. So in other words, we're gonna take away the negative because we don't really care. Okay, I, I care about what the what the absolute difference is. I don't care if it's negative or positive. So to do that, we're gonna use a formula in Excel. Um, I believe it's ABS. Yeah, so ABS returns the absolute value. So we're gonna say equals, that tells Excel to use a function for this cell value. And we're gonna put in the name of the Excel, ABS, and then we're just gonna put a left parenthesis we're gonna click on the cell that we wanna use as the input to the function, and then we're gonna put a right parentheses and we're gonna hit enter. So you can see now it turned that negative number into a positive number. And so now we can just drag this all the way down. Okay. So now we have the absolute values of those elevation differences. Now you notice when we do that, I lost my formatting, right? So I'm gonna come back to the home page under the number group in the ribbon, and I'm gonna say, hey, give me my, Give me my other zero again. Doesn't want to do that. Let me try this. Okay, so so we fixed that. Okay, now what we want to do is we just want to copy these values. So now I have the absolute values. We got rid of all our negatives. All right. And so I'm gonna just I'm gonna copy those and we're gonna paste them into this column here. But if we just do a regular paste, it's going to break. So let me just show you that. So you see how it gives you this ref? That's because now we have what's called a circular reference, okay? Because we were using this input as the function. So it's actually paste in the function again. We don't want it to do that. What we want to do is we want to do a special paste here, and we just say we just want to paste the values. Okay, so now I have the values. Okay, so sometimes you want to paste the values. You don't want to paste the actual you don't want to copy and paste over the actual function. Okay, so now I can uh, I can delete all these. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to redo our sort now because we have we we eliminated the negative numbers. So we'll go back to data, sort, and we're just going to rerun this sort. And now it did what we want. So you can see my smallest elevation difference for class one is uh, zero hundredths, okay, or flat. And then for my class one, my largest difference is right here is 2,500. Okay, so class one, or sorry, 2,700. Class two is the look. The smallest difference is 500. The largest is uh, not uh, 8,900. Nope, sorry, 1.26 feet, 1.68 feet. Sorry, class two, the smallest is 200, and the largest is 1.01. Okay. So what we want to do now is we want to run some statistics on each class of points. And we want to know what's the average difference and what is um, the, the elevation difference at, at 90, what we call the 95% confidence level. You might remember that from your high school statistics class. So in other words, we want to know what elevation difference would include 95% of the values. Okay, and that's, that's a fairly standard that's a, that's a fairly common standard, statistical standard that we meet in surveying. Okay, so how are we gonna do that? What we wanna do is we wanna come in here and um, at, the, at the boundary here between the class one and the class two points, we're just gonna go ahead and add some empty rows. So I'm actually gonna add four empty rows because uh, we're gonna use those empty rows to run our statistics. And I'm gonna come down here, I'm gonna do the same thing here between the class two and the class three points. So I'm gonna give myself some, some blank rows to run the statistics. We don't need to do that here because we've got plenty of, plenty of blank rows, blank cells already. Okay, so now we're gonna come up, we're gonna put in our statistics. So I'm gonna um, just do a little label here. So we're gonna do the average. So we're gonna say average difference. And then we're gonna say, um, uh, I, I want the, um, Uh, the uh, nine. I'm gonna just say 95 percent confidence level difference, okay. um, and I'm gonna make those bold so they stand out a little bit. 
Okay, and then we're gonna we're gonna put the actual function to calculate the statistics in here. So again, we're gonna put an equal sign in first because that tells Excel we're we're using a function to, to calculate the cell value. And the first formula that we're gonna use, the first function we're gonna use is average. Okay, so um, that's just the AVG, and then we're gonna come up and we're gonna say, all right, give us the average. Okay, and I'm just putting in the range of cells there. You can see I did that with my parentheses. Okay. Oh, and I had I had the wrong uh, function name there, so it's telling me, hey dummy, do you want to use the right function name? Yes. Okay, so for our class one points, our average difference was nine hundredths. Okay, so that's good to know. All right, so now we want to know at ninety five percent what, what's our difference at ninety five percent. Okay, so we're going to put in an equal here, and to do that, uh, we're going to run. A, we're going to use a function. It's called standard deviation, and we want to make sure that we use the one for the sample. Okay, not the population. So the reason we're using a sample is because we don't have the entire population of points, um, and in surveying, you almost you almost never do. Um, and I don't want to get I don't want to get super lost in the weeds on that. I'm sure you can you can search on YouTube and there'll be a video that explains the difference between a sample and a population statistics. But um, when serving, we're almost always we're always using a sample. So we're going to go ahead and click that, and then it says what range do you want? So we're going to go ahead and select that same grouping of numbers. Okay, so at 95 percent. Um, we're uh, we're getting 800s. Okay, now I know that's not right. Uh, this should be larger than the average, um, as a general rule. So that's a little weird. So here's what I want to do. Um, let me let me make sure I have this right. Oh. You know why? Because uh, that's the standard deviation. Okay, that's not 95%. In statistics, this is 68%. Okay, so in order to make this 95% in statistics, we've got to put this whole function in parentheses, and then we have to multiply that. So I'm going to say asterisk symbol. So shift eight for the asterisk symbol. That means multiply. And in statistics, you have to multiply by 1.96. Okay, to get your uh, your difference at 95%. Okay, so there's our difference at 95%. Now, I think I'm lying to myself here because I got rid of my negative values and I think that's actually making this number lower than I want. Okay, so we want to we want to redo that, which is why I saved the raw data over here, okay? So how how are we going to do that? <laughs> so, let me um, let me pause the video and then I'm going to um, I'm going to drop the, the numbers back in here, okay, with the negative values. All right, so I got the, uh, the the values dropped in here for the class one, and I restored the, the negative values, and you can see that that did make a difference, right? So my, my difference at the 95% confidence level went from 1500s to 2200s. So you got to be careful with your, your statistics or you can lie to yourself, right? Okay, so... Yeah, I'm recording. Oh, what Wait. are you going to be done? Close the door. Are you going to get something? I want a soda. Close the door. That's my wife interrupting. All right. So the problem is when we restore the negative values, now we're lying about the average, right? So how are we going to fix that? I'll tell you what we're going to do. We are going to add a column, and then we're going to um, we're going to copy this, and we're going to have both the values with the negatives, negative numbers and the positive numbers. And we're going to have a column with the absolute values. Okay. So we're going to run that formula again. Okay, and that's going to allow us to calculate these um, the way we want. And I'm actually yeah, I guess that's how the best way to do that. Okay, so now I'm going to move the average function over. Okay, and now I'm getting the, the real average and the real difference at 95%.
Okay, but to do that, we need we need the positive and the negative elevation differences, and we need the absolute values. Okay, so let's go ahead and let me do that for these uh, class two and class three points. And I pause the video, and then when I restart, um, we'll we'll do our our formatting to wrap this up. All right, guys. So I have the <clears throat> the absolute values and the the positive and negative values pasted in for these other two classes, class two, class three. Okay, and so we want to run the statistics on those, and it's really easy. We can just copy these cells down to the bottom of each class. Okay, now you do have to make sure that you update the ranges that are being used to do the calculation. So you can see I'm missing some here, right? And you can just hover over the corner there and then left click, drag up. Okay, and we got to do the same thing over here. So you click on the cell, then you click in the formula bar, and it'll give you this box. And then you can just left click, left click, drag up. Okay, and then we have uh, one more. So again, we want to make sure these boxes cover the right area. They don't, so we're going to drag up, left click, drag up. Click on this cell, click in the formula bar, and then we'll hover over this corner, left click, drag up, hit enter. Okay, so now we're now we're updated. Okay, so we've, we've got our values. All right, now the last thing I want to do on this is just a little, we're going to do a little, a little bit of formatting to make this look a little nicer. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give this a background fill. Okay, and I am going to use our company colors. Um, so you don't have to do that, but I'm going to do that. So, I'll, and then you can see when I do that, it makes it really hard to read, right? So we're going to make the text white because we have a we have dark company colors. Okay, and then down here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a a, a thick, uh, not too thick, but I'm going to put a bottom border on. Okay, and then uh, with these right here, I'm going to go ahead and make uh, I'm going to add another color, our other color company color. Okay, and it is also dark, so we're going to make our text white again, and we'll, we'll make all the text bold. Okay, and then I'm going to just leave one row in between there. Okay, leave one row in between, and actually what I might do um, is give a top border. Okay. And then, and then uh, actually, let's do this too. Let's insert here. Oop. So I do not want a background fill on this. And then we're going to do a top border here. Okay, and actually, now now that I think about this, we we don't really need this description row anymore. It's super redundant uh, because what we're going to do here is we're going to say this is class one. Okay, and we got to make our text black. Okay, so then we can do the same thing here. I'm gonna give myself another empty row with no fill. And we're gonna say class two right here. I can make that bold. Okay, I'll just make this match. Okay, and then we'll do that down here. Okay, so we're gonna now. Since we already have this styled the way we want, we can just hit the Format Painter, select those cells, hit the Format Painter. Whoa, oh, don't do that. And then we can just paint these cells here. Oop, oh, didn't like that. Let's try it again. Okay, and then we'll add that top border, and we'll call this class. Is it class? Is this class three? I can't remember. Yeah, that's class three, and then we gotta format the last bar here. Okay, so then we'll come down and format here. Okay, and we want to save our changes. Okay, so this is this is pretty close to the final product. Okay, now one thing I, I have to go look at is um, so I'm actually going to resort this. So I'm going to come in. It's not going to change these statistics 
but I'm going to go ahead and sort this again um, and I'm going to do just one level sort and I want to sort by um, the absolute value elevation difference C because okay? I think that's the most the most relevant data here okay so we're going to do that three times Okay, one of the reasons I'm, I'm doing this is because I want to see if I have any outliers um, in my data set. So I think class one is looks pretty tight. Okay, but let's come down and look at our class two. Um, so I've got a I've got a pretty big jump here. Um, these last three points look to me like they might be outliers, um, and I notice that these two point numbers are pretty close together. What this indicates is we may have an issue with our surface here, oh, um, so we we may need to we may need to go look at the surface here. So what I'm going to do just for now is I'm going to put these three areas in red, just red text. These three points, because um, I may need to want to I may need to look at those now. He, here's here's what you can do, just for kicks and giggles. You can delete those values, and what you can see is um, that brings down our that bring down that brings down our um, it chops two or three tenths off of our ninety five percent difference, uh, but it's not you know it's not making a, a huge difference there. But I'm gonna go ahead. We'll go ahead and look at the surface in that area. Um, yeah, I suspect there may be an issue just right here, and you never know. We may go in and look at this and find out that this point is also in the same area. So we we may we may need to go add a little ground survey data there potentially. Okay, now down here, I you know this is a pretty even spread here, so I don't think that we I don't think we have any outliers, but we will look at this. And so, if you're interested, we flew this with a with a Wingtra UAV PPK, um, and then we went and did some infill infill survey ground infill surveys in areas where we had had some vegetation. So this is the hardscape, the pavement, and uh, you can see these are excellent results. Um, so this is this is really good. This is uh, basically basically we're meeting the spec there that that we would meet with our UAV lidar system. Uh, we met that with the with the Wintra. Uh, now with the caveat, we have some ground survey data in our in our surface there. Uh, but what this what this means is um, this this hardscape, which in our case is pavement. Um, across this site, it's a big site, it's, it's I can't remember if it's 1,600 or 1,800 acres, but across that site, anywhere we have pavement, which is our only hardscape, um, we're, we're gonna, we've got a really good surface, okay? So our, our values are, uh, our values are, are plus or minus, um, not plus or minus, they're two tenths total, so plus or minus about 1,100. At the 95% confidence level, so that's excellent for an aerial survey. For for what for the for what is the majority majority aerial survey? Okay, now this class two, this is where we have some compacted dirt, um, and and there's some roads out. I don't know if you call them roads, there, but there's some there's some roads. There's some two tracks now. There there some of those are pretty rutted, so there is a fair amount of variability there. Um, uh, so you can see in the compacted dirt. Um, you know that's a that's a little bigger than I expected, um, but I think again some of that is is just some of the there's some pretty big potholes and ruts out there, um, and again you know if, if we come in here and um, just chop out some of these force values, um, this this quickly gets down into the to the range that I would expect um, that I would expect for our survey. So we'll we'll go in and take a look at this. This is one of the reasons why you ground truth right is this indicates we may have an issue with the surface. In this one location, um, and then this is these these are disc fields, um, and the, from the bottom of the furrow to the top of the furrows, on average, three quarters of a foot. But in some areas, it can be a foot and a half. So I'm actually pretty su I'm surprised it came out as good as it did here. So this is this is actually excellent for the for the area in which we have these disc fields. So what this means is across our surface on this 1,800 acres at the 95% level. 
um, were less than a, than a foot absolute okay so plus or minus a half a foot and in some of these areas in some of these um, class three areas here this is an areas where we had some vegetation um, so it's disc fields and areas where we had some thick grass or some thick weeds and so this is actually this is actually really good okay um, so I think we're about done there uh, I will go in with my team and we'll take a look at these three points and just make sure we don't have an issue with our surface but so uh, that's how um, you know that's, that's how you run some some basic statistics in Excel you know we did some data sorting cut and pasting data sorting uh, did a, a single and a double level data sort we used some basic functions absolute value average standard deviation um, we did some formatting um, so yeah if, you know if you come to work at RH you got to know you got to know how to wrangle data in Excel like this um, now the one la the, the last thing I pro I'll probably do is I'll, I'll probably delete this tab with the raw data now that I'm done I don't need that and we'll rename scratch and uh, I'm just going to rename it to analysis okay and then I'll save this and appreciate you guys hanging in there I try and keep these videos to 10 minutes that was about a half an hour but uh, hopefully uh, you guys learned some new things in Excel either about Excel or about how we ground truth data um, when we do aerial mapping so thanks for watching guys appreciate it